ever come across the term SCP? You've been on the internet for a while, chances are you're familiar with it. And if not, well, you've likely stumbled upon one of these. These things are known as SCP anomalies, creatures, entities, or objects with bewildering powers and mysterious origins. The SCP Foundation operates in secrecy within that realm, dedicated solely to a task of apprehending, analyzing, and containing all things paranormal. The Boeing Corporation is the equivalent of the SCP Foundation without the altruistic intention. Your job as a newly hired manager for this company is to extract energies from abnormalities again to SAPs. Think of it as an SCP management game, except the game is malevolent and takes pleasure from punishing you. The gameplay of the Boeing Corporation is pretty straightforward. At the beginning of each day, you choose abnormality and assign agents to perform one of four types of tasks. Depending on work results and the personalities of abnormalities, they'll either stop murdering people or peacefully remain in their cells. Rinse and repeat until you collect enough energy and proceed to your next day. Sounds simple, right? Well, not quite. Not all abnormalities are equal in power. There are five different power levels, with higher levels being more challenging to manage. While Zion level abnormality is usually docile and less likely to breach containment, an LF is guaranteed to cause havoc and wreck destruction at every turn. To further complicate things, each abnormality comes with its own set of unique traits and preferences. Some abnormalities have a preference for specific types of tasks while others tend to dislike certain types of work. Some abnormalities exhibit special affinity towards clerks, and there is one that constantly craves attention. I'm simplifying here, but you get an idea. Now, you might be tempted to go for the easiest abnormalities and call it a day. But here's the catch. First, you won't have any prior knowledge of which abnormalities are easiest to handle. The game only provides you with subject numbers and a few vague descriptions before you interact and research them. Second, higher level abnormalities offer substantial boosts in energy and yield superior training results for your nuggets. Additionally, they provide access to vastly improved weapons and armor compared to your lower tier counterparts. The game also implements a system where high level gear receives reduced damage from lower tier opponents while inflicting greater damage upon them. It will be your best interest to acquire as many high quality gears as possible because we will start encountering tough enemies much sooner than you might expect. Third, dealing with abnormalities locked inside is not the only challenge you will face. Each interaction with these abnormalities will fill little boxes on the top left corner. As you continue these interactions, a series of challenges called ordeals will gradually unfold, following the sequence of dawn, noon, dusk, and midnight. And in case you are wondering, yes, there will be challenging boss fights awaiting you. <sighs> By now, you likely recognize that the Boeing Corporation is far from an easy game, and you will need to restart a lot. However, for games that is unforgiving, the Boeing Corporation is actually quite generous when it comes to restarting. There are three types of restarting. Day Reset, which undoes your progress for the day and puts you back at the preparation phase. Memory Repository, which serves as a checkpoint every five days, allowing you to go back to your last checkpoint but no further. You get to keep most things, including all your research and equipment, but your nuggets will be untrained and you have to randomly choose your abnormalities again. This mechanic can be abused by researching all the abnormalities and obtaining their egos while expanding the central command team and keep loading the last checkpoint until you unlock everything. If you find yourself in situations that prove too challenging to handle, don't worry, you can always opt to restart from day one, as if you are hitting a reset button and starting anew. The beauty of this approach is that you will carry over most of your progress, enabling your next endeavor to be considerably smoother. With the knowledge and equipment acquired from your previous run, the next attempt will be far less intimidating. However, it's important to know that this process can become somewhat tedious, 
a topic I'll explore further in a later part of review. Compact in Lobolin Corporation presents the most challenging aspect of the game. In addition to the already difficult fights, there are a few issues that make combat less enjoyable. The limited commands available for your nuggets can be quite frustrating. They can only receive simple instructions like go there or attack this. The game's controls add to the frustration, especially when you try to maneuver them to avoid attacks. Moving nuggets around feels sluggish and bothersome, and once you assign them to a room, they tend to wander aimlessly. It's impossible to pinpoint the exact location you wanted to go, which means you cannot easily make a nugget evade an attack by clicking directly behind the boss. Instead, you have to click on the room behind it. And sometimes, the passing can be a bit finicky. Every weapon in the game has its own cool sound and flashy visual effects. They are pretty neat, no doubt about that. But when you only should hold all 40 nuggets, each swing their own weapon at the boss, it starts to get a little unhealthy for your ears. And you are finding it nearly impossible to dodge anything with all those crazy effects and damage numbers popping out everywhere. The Warren Corp is a roguelite game, or roguelite, whatever you want to call it. The Ever Mortis you choose each day are completely random. You will not get high level Ever Mortis from day one, but you can get annoying ones from early days of your game. And this randomness brings about a difficulty curve that feels like a wild roller coaster ride. To make matters worse, you'll come face to face with LF abnormalities as early as day 13. And there's even one that is a guaranteed first day restart you're new to the game by day 11. And let me tell you, these are the last things you want to see breaching the containment. I encountered a major difficulty spike when I came across a scarecrow, a hay level abnormality. Managing it proved to be quite challenging. It inflicts hefty white damage in its containment cell. I need an employee with high prudence or reliable armor that could withstand white damage. However, dealing with a scarecrow presented a dilemma. If a nugget with high prudence worked on it, it will instantly breach due to its unique trait. I had to choose between assigning a high prudence nugget and suppressing it when it escapes, or sending a nugget with low prudence and inadequate armor due to my limited gear options, hoping they wouldn't lose their sanity upon leaving the cell. Spoiler alert, both options turn out to be terrible. The Warren Corps presents challenging, yet not impossible fights. However, the most punishing aspect of the game is the time you unavoidably spend restarting the day repeatedly. In the later stages, it can easily take over an hour to reach a difficult day. The Warren Corp also requires you to grind for nuggets, ensuring they don't get one-shotted by everything. The same idea applies to acquiring eco equipment, and these equipment will be lost when the wielder is dead. Oh, and did I mention I have to do multiple runs to even have a chance of completing the game? I hope you enjoy the gameplay because you'll be repeating the same process for a significant portion of your playtime. The gameplay of Low One Corp is interesting and novel, but it gets stale when you start your third run. The game also has one pitfall that can undo your whole run if you don't know about it beforehand. You cannot complete the last two Sephiroth suppressions in a single run. At least not without prior knowledge and evenly developing your record team and extraction team. You need to finish one of them, use a memory repository, and then complete the other one. And guess what? I didn't know. Desperate to find a solution, I even tried triggering the suppression by console. Long story short, why could initiate the core suppression in this manner, it wouldn't count as a legitimate completion and force me to start another run. The story, in my opinion, is the best aspect the game has to offer. It has a touch of edginess, but I find it to be just enough to suit my taste. In Lobo Incorporation, you take on the role of a manager, accompanied by your AI assistant, Angela, as you navigate through the days while expanding your faculty. During your journey, you cross paths with Stern Sephiroth, each entrusted with overseeing a distinct department. Along the way, You'll explore their personal stories and the deep traumas they've faced. The structure of the story in Laboring Corporation is somewhat fragmented. While you do get new dialogues as you progress through the days, these dialogues remain the same even on subsequent runs. 
Instead, the majority of dialogues and lore are revealed through completing missions. Personally, I decided this aspect of the game since restarting becomes mandatory. This design choice is fine on its own, but when starting a new role in the Boy Incorporation, you essentially find yourself engaging in repetitive tasks until you reach a point where new missions can be pursued. Throughout my playthrough, I discovered that I thoroughly enjoyed the story and found myself completely immersed in it. While the actual story is relatively short, the quality of writing is surprisingly decent, especially considering that it's a Korean game that's been translated into English. To avoid any spoilers, I won't dive too deeply in this story, so let's move on to a conclusion. In conclusion, The Wall Corp is a game that truly stands out, combining monsters with management team to create a unique experience that can be both captivating and frustrating. As you get more familiar with the mechanics though, you may start to notice some repetition. While many abnormalities are creatively designed, it's worth mentioning that the two abnormalities heavily rely on the die within X seconds concept, which can become somewhat overbearing. The engaging story could benefit from improved pacing, but the world building of Lobon Corp is exceptional, and its sequel, Liberal Runia, further expands on it. It's important to note that Lobon Corp has its fair share of bugs, including a memory leak issue that developers have yet to address. I would rate Lobon Corp as an 8 out of 10. It's a niche game that I love and hate at the same time. I would definitely not recommend this to everyone. And with that, we come to the end of review. In case you're wondering, yes, I finished Library of Junior, but I intend to review other games first, Darkwood or Neon White. Probably Neon White. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care.